Bible says that we need to give God praise. Isn't he worthy? So I know Josh prayed, but I'm going to pray for myself. Let me, let me pray. Most holy and righteous Father, Lord, I'm, Lord God, I'm just me. But God, I ask, Lord God, that you would decrease me, that you would increase. That every word proceed from my mouth, Lord God, let it come from you. I pray for the anointing power of the Holy Spirit, that it would touch, that it would set people free, that remind them, Lord God, that they're not forsaken, but God, that, that God, you are who you say you are. You're a strong tower. You're the lily of the valley, and you're the bright in the morning star. May people leave better than they came in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning, I have a question this morning. What did you bring to God's house this morning? What did you bring to God's house this morning? And I know for some, we brought our prayers and we brought our concerns, we brought our anxieties, we brought everything that we can think of. But this morning, I, I just want to ponder this question this morning. Did you bring your praise? Did you bring your praise this morning? Because if you're one of these type of people who have to get prodded and primed up for praise, then there's a problem right now. And so just to give you the, uh, the, the meaning of praise, the Hebrew meaning of this word called praise is halal, and which, which it essentially means to boastfully glorify. And let me tell you why praise is important. Praise is important because it facilitates us to have access to God. So when I come every Sunday morning, I don't have to get ready for praise. I come already in a praise mode. And so a lot of times we're having problems because praise cannot be a condition. Praise must be a decision. And for those who are here who know that God has been good to them, you cannot wait to get in here to give God some praise because God has been ever present in your life. And you look back and you look at every situation and every pitfall and everything that God has brought you from, you got to come in and you got to give God some praise. Praise is what you want to be bringing this morning. And what you should be bringing every time you come into God's house. So for those who have their Bible, Lord have mercy, turn to Psalms 150. Did you bring your praise? Did you leave your praise home? Have you lost the very essence of praising God? Because you're so beat up with the problems of the world that you forgot about the same God that took care of you back then is the same God that is now. We serve a can-do God, a God that moves by praise. If you want God to move on your behalf, you got to change the way you think. Psalms 150. And I'll be dealing with the New King James Version. And I, and I want you to, to get the, the backdrop of Psalms 150. The, 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 the writer of Psalms is trying to direct us to, first of all, he's trying to direct us that we should praise. Then he directs us to who we should be giving our praise to. And then he directs us to how to do it. Lord have mercy. And so... Let's get into the, this thing with praise. Because I think sometimes we put praise in somebody else's hands where praise should be in our, in our hands. You choose to give God some praise. I don't need no music 
to give God praise because all I got to do is think about God's goodness and what he done for me. My mouth is already ready to give God some praise. God is worthy of praise. I praise him every day. But when I get in this house, when I get into this setting, I'm already ready to give God some praise. Why? Because I need God to see me. This is a place where God moves. So I need God to see me in my condition. I need him to see me when I'm failing. I need him to see me because I need him. That's why I bring my praise. I can't leave my praise home. Nor can I let you take my praise. So, so, so this, this Psalms 150, I want y'all to get this thing. It says, let, let what? All things praise the Lord. And it says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Lord have mercy. You know the amazing thing that I see in this verse is that it mentions praise before we get to praising in the sanctuary. That means that you're supposed to come in the morning already with a praise in your spirit. Why do we got to wait to hear some music? Why do we got to wait to hear a song to get in praise mode? You should be ready to come in to give God some praise. How many praises in here? How many people are here? Don't mind giving God praise. And you know, it don't matter about who singing. It don't matter about who playing. It don't matter about what the song is. You're just ready to give God some praise. It, look, look, look here, see. So let all things praise the Lord. Are you coming in with a praise attitude? Is praise all on you? See, a lot of people got praise in them, but they don't bring praise with them. Lord have mercy. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because a lot of people have the ability to praise God, but they don't praise no, they don't bring no praise with them. But when I come every Sunday, I bring praise with me. It's already in me, but I bring it with me. Why? Because I need to give God some praise. When I think about the week that I've been through, when I think about the pitfalls that it brought me through, I'm already ready to give God some praise. And I'm saying this morning, do not let the problems of this world make you leave your praise home. This is the place that you bring the praise. This is the place where God moves. This is the place where your breakthrough comes. You need to give God praise. Why? Because he's worthy. Ain't God worthy? See, it's ironic that God sets up the atmosphere this morning about praise. Why? Because sometimes we forget about the goodness of God. And we get so indignant. We look so pretty. We smell so good. And then we just get all, all you know, this, this, we just, uh, it's just spirit. And, and, we, and we, we worry about who's going to see us and what Kiba going to say. And we come in and we don't want to give God no praise. And then you want to blame Kiba because your spiritual walk it's been contaminated. You bring, you get what you, you, you get what you bring in. Listen, listen, Lord have mercy. Don't you understand that if you come in with nothing, you can leave out of here with nothing? But when I come in, I'm already ready to give God some praise. Why? Because I need a word from God. I need a touch from God. So I come in ready to give God praise because I can leave my belly and I came in. Lord have mercy. Let all things that praise the Lord. He, he's, he's compelling us that praise should already be in us before we get here. And then it moves us again to emphasize the word again, praise. You understand that you see all throughout this Psalms 150, the word praise is continually mentioned over and over and over again. Why? Because God loves praise. God moves by praise. God will move in your behalf by praise. God will heal your body by praise. And it's praise that will make the enemy mad. But it also can set you free. You ever, you ever have some issues that have been troubling you all week? But when you come into God's house and you're ready to give God some praise, you forget about what you left at home. Forgot about what bothers you. Forgot about what infirmities you're dealing with. Because praise 
will change your heart. It will change your mind. It will override your condition. Lord have mercy. Praise the Lord. And, and, and the psalmist is trying to get us to understand that we're supposed to bring our praise with us before we even get here. Do you leave your praise on? Has praise left the vicinity of your walk? Are you more concerned about the songs than thinking about the goodness of God and that he is, you're compelled to give God some praise? So the psalmist is directing us to praise and acknowledge God, but also look at this verse. Not only is he is, is directing us to praise God, but he's also telling us that when we get into his sanctuary, we need to let it go. You know, I don't understand, Lord have mercy. I don't understand how people can sit still and when all this praise is going on, they just like a dead man walking. They ain't got nothing to say. They, they, they body language is like they don't want to be here. And then you want to get mad and say, it, it must be the music. It's not the music. Because the melody of God's goodness is inside here. And you let it permeate. And you, you do a playback. And you think about what God done done you. And what God done delivered you from. And how he took care of your family. And how he made a way out of no way. How he continues to look beyond your faults and sees your very need. If that ain't a reason to give God some praise, I don't know what else. Are you ready to give him some praise? Is praise not only in you, but you bring it with you? Or you don't mind opening up your mouth? You don't mind throwing a hallelujah? You don't mind giving him the highest praise? Am I by myself here this morning? There's something about being in God's house that reminds me that God is always there. And I know that y'all felt God present this morning. He is still here. And he's saying this morning, do not let the enemy, do not let your problems, do not let those problems of the world beat you up where you forget about your praise. Bring your praise here. If you want a breakthrough, bring it here. If you want deliverance, bring it here. Your praise should not be a condition. It should be a decision. Don't you love him? Oh, my God. When I think about God's goodness and all he's done for me, I got some hallelujah this morning. Don't y'all got him? Matter of fact, I come with a suitcase full of hallelujahs. I'm sorry. I got to give God credit. I, I'm like my dad. I got some thank yous. There is something about God's goodness that I just can't keep my mouth closed. When I think about what he done done, when I think about his goodness, how he kept me, how he ministered to me, how the favor of God is upon me, I got to give God praise. I come in and I want to give God praise. I'm bringing not some of it, I'm bringing all of it. All my praise belongs to God. And if you don't want to do it, that's all right. But my alabaster box is full of praise. I bring it because he's worthy. I bring it because He's merciful. I bring it because he loves me. And he continues to show his grace from day to day. Isn't God good? Isn't God awesome? And so the psalmist is saying, direct your praise. We let too many people control our praise. We let too many people get in the way of our praise. We let too many things block our praise. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to give you all the tip this morning. You know the enemy want to take your praise? You understand that the enemy will take your praise? He's not just after your joy. He's after your praise. Because he take your praise away, you're ineffective. But the devil's a liar. I don't care how I look. I don't care what the circumstance may look like. I still got to give God praise. No, he may not give me what I want all the time. But he's an all-time God. That's why I give him praise. That's why I give glory, because I'm still here. That's a hallelujah right there. I'm clothed in my right mind. That's a hallelujah right there. I'm thinking about how he done made a way out of no way. Every month after month, every day after day, the favor, the grace, the kindness, the love. I got hallelujahs 
all on my body. And though he may not give me what I want, though he may not heal me of every infirmity, I still got to give God praise. Is there a hallelujah this morning that y'all got? And there are some thank yous that y'all want to unleash this morning. And stop worrying about what people think. It may look indignant. It may look messy. It may look kind of tacky. That's all right. Because God's not concerned about how your praise look. He just want it. Is you going to give it to him? Oh, we done got so much like the world that we shouldn't act like that. That's it. We shouldn't behave like that. But if I'm going to be a fool, I'm going to act a fool up in here. If I'm going to lose my mind, I'm going to lose my mind up in here. Because guess what? When I was out there in the world, I knew what I was doing. I was acting a fool. So make no mistake. We see Deacon Neal lose his mind. I know what I'm doing. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm giving the God that made me, the God that saved me, the God that delivers me, the God that supplies all my need, I'm giving him praise. Because he's worthy. Because he's worthy. I know what God done done for me. That's why I can't keep my mouth closed. I know what he continues to do for me and my household. And, I, and that's why I give him praise. I give him all the honor. Because I know that I'm a work in progress. But I get excited because he said he even going to good work. It's faithful to complete it. So I don't know what God is doing in this season. But I know that God will take care of me. And that's why I give him praise. So the psalmist is in his verse saying, let all things praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. But also the psalmist is getting us to understand, not only, and he's telling you why you should praise God. For his what? Mighty firmament. I praise God because God is the creator of everything. Everything is under his control. And that's why I don't can't worry about what's happening because I know that in the song we say with kids, he got the whole world in his hands. That means that he ain't forgot me. That means he has not abandoned me. That whatever I'm going through is for my good and his glory. I praise him anyhow because he's a good, good father. But you, the psalm also wants us to acknowledge by directing us to praise and the acknowledgement of God's greatness. God is awesome. When I think about the goodness of God, do you understand the marvelous things of God that we don't even take a, a minute to look at? You look up at the stars at night and you see it every night and you wonder where does the, where does the, Night go, and where does the where does the sun go, and 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 I'm and I'm and, and, and I'm and just I'm all that I see squirrels, and I see when the when it starts raining, where do they go at? Lord have mercy, and, and I'm just amazed about the the, the 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 evolution of things that God has created. But beyond that, I'm inspired by the word because God said, out of everything that I made, I made you in my image. That means that I'm special. That means I got favor. And if that's not enough to make you come in and give God some praise, I, 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 don't, I, don't, know what, I don't know what else is going to move you. But verse 2, praise him for his what? Mighty acts. Sometimes we forget about what God done, done for us because we are so busy in the now that we got about what God done, what, back then. But every now and then, I bring some, some praise that I got right now, but also bring some praise that I think about what God done done back then, and my soul cries, hallelujah. I've been in 10 car accidents. I've seen some things. I've been through some things. But I know that it was by the grace of God. That's why I got a hallelujah back then that I bring right now, because I don't want him to forget I don't want to take for granted of God's goodness. That's why I got to give God some praise. I can't forget what he done. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his what? Excellent greatness. 
Ain't that something to get God crazy for? Do y'all got some hallelujahs? Do y'all got it this morning? Y'all want to do, that's cute to remind, lift up their hand this morning and, and throwing them up this morning. Don't do it for me. But if you're thinking about God being good to you, don't do it for me. Every now and then, we got to stop worrying about what people saying. And if God been good to you, this is the place where you give God some praise. And you want to take your shoes off, that's all right. And you want to lose your mind, that's all right. I got to give God praise. Lift up your hands. Say hallelujah. If God been good to you, make this thing personal today. Think about what God done done for you this week. That's a hallelujah. Think about the thing that he been telling you from, from seen and unseen. Think about how he makes a way out of no way. There are a lot of people who are homeless, but by the grace of God, we have a roof over our head. That's a hallelujah. And some people been affected by COVID. Some people didn't make it through COVID, but by the grace of God, we're still here. That's a hallelujah. I got to put my hands up. That's a hallelujah. My wife keep going through issues. I keep going through stuff, but God kept me. God keeps me. God makes a way for me. He always looks out for me. He's always there. His word speaks to me. His grace surrounds me. His peace covers me. That's why I got to give God some praise. Oh, have mercy. There is something about praise that makes the enemy mad. That's why the enemy try to, you ever have, you be trying to come to church and something will try to get in the way of your praise. Y'all know that? You got somebody, you, I, I, you, got, you got your husband, you got your wife, you got your kids. All of a sudden now they want to know where the bowl is, where, where the cereal at? All week you had a chance to tell me we was out of cereal, but now you want to wait and act the fool up when I'm trying to come to church. Now you want to start this school. Know why? Because the devil wants to get it. He wants to get in between your praise because he know that praise will unleash God to move. He know that praise will take you to the next level. And so what he does, he tries to stronghold your praise. He tried to uh, uh, handcuff your praise. He tried to shackle your praise. And guess what? A lot of us, we, we help him succeed. I ain't coming now. He, he, that, that man upset me. I ain't coming now. I, I can't focus. That's what he wanted. That's what he, that's what he wants to do. He wants to interrupt our praise. Your praise is valuable. I keep saying it. That's why the enemy wants it. But I also want you all to understand this thing too. Look at verse 3. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. I'm going to do verse 4. Praise him with the timbrel and, and dance. Lord have mercy. Now, for those who don't dance well, that's all right. That's all right. Here, you can do anything you want to do. Now, you want to do the chicken or whatever, whatever praise thing you want to do. Listen, what I'm just saying that God is saying in this bird that it's okay to dance. Now, if you're not a good dancer and you just don't want to do it, that's your business. But here... This is, not, this is not a dancing contest. Therefore, you can get up and you want to jump up and start dancing and giving God credit. That's all right. This is the environment for you to let it all hang out. See how, see how the churches got so, we've gotten so conditioned to where we scared to do certain stuff that the Bible telling us it's all right to do? Lord have mercy. And I also want y'all to understand this thing. One more dynamic of, of verse 3. I want y'all to get. You understand that praise is a very vehicle that God moves. Let me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Y'all ain't got to turn to it. Praise is so dangerous and so powerful that God uses it in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22. With Jehoshaphat. They were being attacked by a mole. And the only thing that they had to do is just say. And God took care of all the rest. Let me tell you what that means. There are some battles 
that the only way that you're going to defeat it is with your praise. That's, that, that, that's, 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 that's essentially it. In that particular chapter, they were being attacked by Mo. And Jehoshaphat, all they did was praise. And when they went out the next day, all those bodies were right there. If you wanted God to help you get through some battles, it requires you to open your mouth. And it requires you to give God praise. I understand that when you're troubled, it is hard. But don't allow that to stop you from opening your mouth, to lifting up holy hands, to giving God praise. Praise him anyhow. I know it's hard, but you praise him anyhow. I know you're broken, but you praise him anyhow. Because you want God to move, and you want God to heal you, and you want God to deliver you. Your praise is your power welcome. Have you tried it lately? Have you tried it? The power of your praise? Have you tried it? Have you been so broken down that a song will come your way that will lift you up, that will make you feel better, that reminds you that you're more than a conqueror, that reminds you that this too shall pass, that reminds you that you will make it. I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. I know that whatever comes my way, my life is in his hands. You have some songs like that. Say, I'm no ways tired. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Do not pass me by, oh rugged cross. I live I, I, and have my being because I know who God is. There is something about song. There is something about praise. That's why the old churches tapped in to God's presence. Y'all know about that. Y'all know about that. Y'all, some of us in here, we all know, know about that. But they were saying one song, 20 minutes. Y'all know about that. Them mothers, them mothers and them, them deacons were getting them hymns going. And one hymn will last 20 minutes, Lord have mercy. But there's something about when they sung them songs that the move of God immediately came. There is power in your praise. There is power when you bring your praise to God. Don't leave your praise home. And if you're one of those people who have not done that, I'm telling you this morning, from this moment on, bring your praise with you. Don't leave your praise home. Find a way to get into praise mode because if you think about what's going on outside these doors, there is something in your playbook that you can find to give God some praise. You know some, somebody didn't wake up this morning? You know that it was not the alarm clock that got you up this morning? You know that it was the grace of God that got you up? You know that it's not your, you can't buy favor? That's the hallelujah right there. Y'all know that, right? You can't buy favor. Now, I know there's got some people out there probably preaching that, but I'm just telling you, you can't buy that. You can't, you can't buy that. But when you think about God's goodness and you think about the evolution of what he keeps doing for you on a daily, the day basis, that's enough to give God praise. Don't you get up this morning with praise? Do you bring it when you come to church? But, and, and think about it, if, if, but here's the thing. The reason why people have a problem doing it here because they don't do it at all. But I'm sorry. I got to give God praise. I, I, I have to. And I can't wait till I get here. I give God praise during the week. But when I get here, this special, this special, this the place. If you want God to move, your, your praise, God will see your praise everywhere. But this his house. And in his house, he moves better. You see the presence of his movement will start to catch on like it did this morning. It's ironic, Josh, when you start saying that. That's how you know God is, God is doing something because God confirms it. You know, every song was, was about worship. You understand that? When I looked at it, when I, when I started hearing that, I said, oh, my God, that, that's you. That's you. And sometimes God needs us to hear this message because sometimes it is easily to forget. The focus should always be about God. And less about you. 
God knows where you're at. He knows that you're hurting. He knows that you are broken. He knows what you're going through. He knows that some people who are hurting you. He knows some people who are out to do you no good. But that should not stop the praise. Because what I believe is that the Bible said that he'll prepare a table for you in the very presence of your enemies. You don't understand how many things that God has protected us from and are protecting us from that we don't even see. How many pitfalls that God has allowed us to stray away from and we take credit for it. And, and, we, and, we, and we believe that it's because we, we got our degrees and because we got our job. No, no. It's the favor of God. It's his kindness. It's his direction. It, it, it is him guiding us and, and, and moving us and deterring us from things that we know is not good for us. But God sometimes, I know I allowed them to go down that way. They won't be able to come back. So God intervenes. So in, in verse 3, praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the loop and praise him with heart. Praise him with the timbre. Praise him in dance. Praise him with string instruments and in flutes. Verse 5, it's going to get good. Now, for those who believe that the church is not supposed to make no noise, I got news for you. This is this, this for the shock, y'all. Now, the, now, we don't mind hollering at a Miami Dolphin game. We don't mind hollering at a Miami Heat game. We don't mind hollering at a commission. Oh, my baby. No, walk down the aisle. We have no problem making no noise. But some kind of way, when it comes to verse 5, Lord, they make it too much noise. It's too noisy. Lord Jesus, did he cut it down the volume too loud? Y'all look at verse 5. Go ahead, mercy. Verse 5 said what? God goes loud noise in him. Now, I, I understand you got some people who believe that, that, that noise should be cut down. But I'm going with God's word say. Look at verse 5. It said what? Praise him for what? Loud what? Symbols. You understand when you when have you ever heard of a silent symbol? When have you ever heard of a clashing symbol not making a lot of noise? And I'm saying is that what we also have done, we also delegate, we also have deferred to what God calls us to do. When you come in here every Sunday, we're gonna be ready to what? Make some noise. Now, for those who have some hearing issues, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. But this is his house. And his house saying, we mean, my God, what? He also said that we must make a what? Joy for what? Noise. So, for those this morning who don't mind opening their mouths, can we just give God some open praise this morning? Y'all want to make some noise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God has been good to you, open your mouth and give God some praise. God is worthy. You got to thank you this morning. Put it up. You got to hallelujah this morning. Put it up. If you know that God to heal your body, throw your hands up. If you know that God has been an ever present help, stand up. It's all right to dance. It's all right to shout. It's all right to scream. It's all right to throw both your hands up and you're going to lose your mind because the goodness of God will not keep you quiet. I don't mind saying thank you. My dad always said thank you. And I say thank you this morning because he's worthy. He is worthy for all praise. He is worthy of all glory. We need to open our mouths 
Did you bring your crane this morning? Did you bring it? Did you bring your crane this morning? Or are you indignant? I, 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 know, I, I, I know what Deacon is saying, but I just don't scream like that no more. Uh, uh, my voice don't let me scream like that no more. Let somebody rob you. Bitch, you open your mouth then. Like, I, can, I can tell you that. Let your house burn down. Bet you open your mouth then. Lord have mercy. There are all kinds of ways that will get you to open your mouth. But when it comes to God, we don't want to do it. But the devil is a liar. I'm going to open my mouth. I don't know about you, but I'm opening my mouth. I got to give my hallelujah. I come in with, with four or five of them. And when I'm here, I get 10 or 12 more. Because you know what? When I'm sitting here, when I hear a word or I hear a song or I hear something to preach, it reminds me that God is always there. It encouraged me to hold on just a little while longer and to keep my praise going. I need you right now. Lord, I need you every hour. I need you. And those songs that come into my spirit, great are the, there is our faithfulness. Lord, unto me, blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. My soul gets happy. And it's not happy because I've done it. It's because what he's doing through me and for me. So, for those people who have an ear condition, I don't know what to tell you. But in this house, under this pastor, under this church, we're going to make some noise. We're going to make some noise. Every time we get here, we're going to make some noise. And, and well, you know, Lord have mercy, I'm about to lose my mind up in here. I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to open my mouth. Because why? I need God to see me. If you need God to see you, why would you not give him praise? So praise him with loud symbols. Praise him with clashing symbols. And I just want to read a, a, a tidbit of a, of a song that's the title of my sermon. And it's by Trinity 5-7. And I just want to read the lyrics. Everything you're going through, my God's going to fix it for you. But you've got to be willing to do the things he wants you to do. He wants you to lift your hands. And he wants you to move your feet. He wants to hear you dance. And he wants to hear you sing. Now, somewhere in the dynamic of those verses, we all can do one of those. So you're not a good dancer, Lord have mercy, over your mouth. But you know what? Keep, keep digging in and pray. I'm telling y'all, I'm trying to get this weight under control. Boy, y'all see the Blue Brothers? Boy, the day y'all see me do a backflip. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to be doing the Blue Brother back. Cause I'm going, the Holy Spirit going to be on me so much. I may do one of them splits. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Now, just give you a tidbit of information. I can get off the floor. I can get down on the floor and get myself back off on the floor. So I know that God is able. I, I ask my wife. I can, I, can, I can stretch out on the floor and get back up. I got to help my wife get up. But I can, I can lay down. I can, I can actually lay down on the floor. And get, so what I'm saying is this. I give God praise. Because that means if God can do that, that one of these days, y'all going to see me do a backflip. Lord have mercy. But I'm just saying that there are, there are multiple reasons to give God praise. There are things that will help us or should inspire us to give God praise. So in Psalms... Uh, 150 verse 5, your praise should be loud, but it should be proud. If you're ashamed to give God some praise here, then you ain't going to do it out there. 
But I'm a praise person. I do it anywhere. I don't mind. I don't mind having crazy music going. I don't mind opening up my mouth because I know that God keeps me. And I know that it's by his grace and his mercy that always follows me. I know that God is continually to do a, a good work. Now, there's a thing that God has not answered, but that does not stop my praise. Nor do I blame him for when he don't do it. Turn to Hebrews right quick. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. And I want you to see yourself in this verse. Hebrews 13, verse 15. I want you to see this and see that you see yourself in this verse. Bring your praise. Let me know y'all have it. Hebrews 13, verse 15. God loves praise, but do you love to praise God? That's the question this morning that you need to ask yourself. God loves praise, but do you love to praise God? Because if you love to praise God, praise should always be our, always before you. It don't matter where you praise God at, what the environment is, what the circumstance, what's going on at home, what's going on at the job, you always come giving God praise. Hebrews 13, verse 15. Therefore, by who? Therefore, by what? By him. Let us do what? Offer what? A sacrifice. Remember I told y'all earlier that sacrifice and praise is a decision? What we, what we see right here? Offer. Who controls y'all? Who controls y'all craze? Who controls your craze? You do. Then why are you blaming musicians? Why are you why are you blaming the types of music? Because the only person that is, is controlled and the captain of your craze is you. Therefore, by him, let us what? Continually offer what? The sacrifice of praise. It is not about pleasing you. It's about pleasing God. Sometimes, keep the Lord have mercy. Don't get past no letter. I'm going to tell you all right now. Sometimes we make praise more about ourselves than we make it about God. Praise is not about you. Let me clear that up. It's not about you. It's about what? God. You're bringing your praise to God. God is not called to praise you. You're going to bring praise to God. We put too much emphasis on how we think praise should go. When you're supposed to be bringing praise to God. And it should not matter by what song. It should not be matter by the style. It should not be matter by whether it's too much a drum or too much cymbal or too much organ. It's all that should matter that God is being lifted up and that you open your mouth and give God some what? Praise. Therefore by him, let us continually offer what? The sacrifice of what? Praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips. What kind of, what kind of fruit on your lips? Is your praise like a lemon? There ain't much to it. Is it like a lime? Bitter? It, it, it don't move nothing? Or is your... It, 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 it's the lips of your craze, like a sweet melon, like a, like a, like a, like a, a scrumptious strawberry that, that changes everything, that makes you feel good all over. What kind of craze is on your lips? And are you, are you, are you pushing it to that it's about God? You're giving God praise. Why we come? To lift up the name of Jesus. Isn't that why we come? Isn't that what our focus is supposed to be about? What is your praise about? Is your praise more about you or is it about God? And, and so 
a lot of times we lose sight that was called to give God praise. It's a sacrifice. But ain't God worth it? Ain't God worth it? Tell me, one person, stand up and tell me God ain't done nothing for you this week. I'm waiting. Stand up. I'm waiting. Pastor, you can stand up and you can be my security. Anybody that God has not done nothing from, that you say, I ain't got nothing to give God praise for, stand up. I'm waiting. You know why? Because it's not true. Did he wake you up this morning? Ain't you cold to your right mind? You're not, in, you're not in some cemetery. You're not in some mortuary. You're not in a hospice. You're not in a hospital. You're not incarcerated. You're not broken. You're not battered to the point where you don't know who you is. That's enough to give God praise. That's enough. That's enough. And if God has not did everything you want, or he is not giving you everything you need, that still does not negate the fact that God is worthy of giving, or you giving him praise. And we'll close out with verse 6. Go back to, let's go back to Psalms 150. Now, look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor to the left and look at your neighbor to the right. Now, you tell me this. I know, a lot, I know everybody in here is prettier than a rock. I, I'm sorry. You know, you know, you know the most silly thing we was kids? They tell you to get a rock and paint it and put eyes on it and all that. You, you, get was the silliest thing, a science project. Take this rock and put some, put some yarn on it and make it a person. That's the most silliest thing. Let me tell you why I'm saying that. Everybody in here is beautiful. We are more valuable than a rock. So why we let a rock outcry us? Why? I'm, I'm more handsome than any rock. I know that. There's no rock that looked better than me. And guess what? A rock was not made in God's image, but I was. Therefore, why would I, I let a rock outcry me? Lord have mercy. Now, y'all can use that. When, when somebody want to beat y'all down, see, you know, I'm pretty than a rock. I'm fatter than a rock. Name a rock that looked better than me. Lord have mercy. And so, let's get to the heart of this last verse. And it says that, let what? Let everything. Do everything, praise God. No, but we should. But did I tell you earlier that praising God should be a decision and not a condition? Too many Christians make praise about a condition. They only want to praise God when they need something. They know how to cry to God. Oh, you come to church to give God some praise when you're in trouble. That's a condition. But how many of us can throw their hands up and know that I give God praise simply because? And that because is for whatever because you want to throw in there. You give God praise because, just because, whatever you want to throw in there. That's why you give God praise because of what he done done for you. Let everything that has breath, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 6 is an inclusive verse. But also in verse 6, it is also a personal, because a personal decision. I choose to come in God's house and to give God praise. I do it. And I do it because I don't care about being seen. But I do care about being heard. And I'm not talking about y'all either. I need God to hear me. My praise is special to him. And I want to give it to him. And so, this, this particular verse is a personal decision to praise. But you also look at this verse 
you know this verse, if you look at it, also leads back to verse 2. It, it also leads back to verse 2. And let me, let me tell y'all, and I'm going to close out with this. Let me tell y'all the personal reason why I praise. The reason why I can't be silent. I want y'all, this, this is what Lord put in my spirit to, just to kind of give you the sense of my feelings about this thing. When I think about God's goodness, it won't allow me to be quiet. When I think about God's grace, it won't let me be still. But when I think about his love, I can't get it out of my mind. And so therefore, for all those reasons, that's the heart of how I feel. I got to come in and give God some praise. Because when I think about the goodness of God, I can't keep quiet. I can't do it. There is something in me that won't keep me quiet. My mouth got to open. Lord, there are times when I get this treatment on my, on my throat. I'm getting this laser treatment on my throat. When I get it, I stay home. And I stay home because it's not that I can't talk. I have to protect myself to keep from singing because when I get here, I'm not supposed to do a lot of doing anything, but when I come here, I can't help myself. And a couple of times I've done it, I went home and my throat hurt worse to the point I thought I was going to have to go back to the doctor. So for that reason, I can't come because I cannot, I will not stay quiet. I won't do it. And it's called the grace of God won't let me be still. And his love, I can't get it out of my mind. And because I can't get it out of my mind, I can't get it out of my heart, therefore I can't get it out of my mouth. I can't stop it. Do y'all have that kind of feeling? And I'm going to close out with this verse. You got to turn to it. In 2 Samuel 6 chapter, the 21 and the 22nd verse. David danced to his clothes came off. Now, I hope y'all got y'all clothes on. We don't, want, we don't want that up in here. So make sure you keep your stuff fast and real good. We don't want that in here. But by contrast, David prayed was so strong that he couldn't control himself. David said, you know, if I'm going to get a dignified, I'm going to do it for God. And I'm saying this this morning. If you're going to be undignified about your praise, this the place. And also, he was unbothered by how he looked. Now, I know some of y'all women spent a lot of money on y'all hair. But that's okay. Still get up and dance. God will give you the money to fix it back. L sweat it out. I know y'all, listen, I know y'all, Lord, you just don't know how much money I've paid to get this hair done. You're going to jump up and sweat, sweat out all this money I don't spend. Yes. Yes. Why are you worried about that? Because you look beautiful, by the way, so you sweat it. God will give you the money to fix it back. So, so we just want to be unbothered by how our praise looks. Are you worried about how your praise look? Are you, are you bothered by when you see somebody else praise being implemented? Or are you jealous? Because you want the same thing. Let me, let me tell you how to get that. Change the way you think. Change the way you think. Because if you want, and, and the reason why you see some of you are praise so strong is because you don't know what they've been through. And because of what they've been through, they have to open their mouths and give God some praise. So, if praise looks kind of tacky, if it looks kind of strange, if, it, if, if you see people doing some stuff that make no sense, don't worry about it. This is God's house. And if they're going to be undignified, let them do it. 
bring your praise. Your praise is not about anybody else. It's about God. Can you magnify the Lord with me? Isn't God, isn't God good? Isn't he worthy? Don't y'all got a testimony? Isn't God good? Always, always there. That's why we give him the praise. Lord have mercy. Let us, let us pray. Bring your praise. Do not leave your praise home. As I said earlier, praise facilitates God access. You have access to God. Don't y'all want God to move? You understand that more, a lot of victories God used praise to Jericho walls came down because of what? You understand how powerful praise is? You understand that when you praise God, the enemy must leave? Get some confusion going in your house and start praising God and watch how the enemy flee. He can't stand that environment where God is being magnified because one, it irritates him. That's why you got to give God praise and don't leave your praise home. Don't be the only thing that you leave home is your master card. Don't leave your praise home. Bring your praise here so that God will not only see it, that he will help you, give you what you need to carry you through another week. Let us pray. Most holy and righteous Father, Lord, we thank you for this message. We thank you for everything that's been done, Lord God, and we ask, Lord God, even now, that, God, you remind your people, Lord God, it is praise that will confuse the enemy, that will set us free, that will encourage us, that will heal us, that will deliver us. Oh, God, I ask your blessings. And, God, I pray, God, that the message you gave, God, that it would saturate every heart, that, God, they will come back from this moment on, bringing their praise, because, God, you are certainly worth it. For everything that you've done and continue to do, we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.